Attention pro athletes. Want to secure your financial legacy and thrive off the field? Oak Bridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, is your dedicated financial planning ally. But don't take it from me. Take it from the Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Biotish. He says, Chris set goals financially and has been incredibly impactful in my journey in the NFL. Experience our customized, comprehensive approach, trusted by top NFL players. Don't leave your financial success to chance. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anaceti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And let Oakbridge Wealth Management guide you across the goal line. Welcome back to Believe in Badgers on the Believe Network, presented by BetOnline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew Hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? Good every day. I could do one of these every day with you. It'd make me smile. But we're not, I'm not, I'm not a legend compared to this guy right here. Oh, <laughs> Casey, you're yeah. one of my favorite people, dude. I never met you. I don't think I met you when I was in college. But I met you a lot of times after in all those fun golf outings that we played in that, man, I still I bring this up to everyone, but you never wore a pair of shoes to golf in. Well, I always say like I, I would always I love, love being on the golf course. I love doing all those things, especially if it benefits Badger football or, you know, Badger athletics, stuff like that. I'm not a golfer. I'm not. My son and my son, my Porter, who just turned 17 yesterday, he uh, he's a he's a phenomenal golfer. So we golf a lot, but I hold them back. I think I hold them back terribly. Um, but I always say, you know, we're going to have the most fun. Our foursome is going to have the most fun, no doubt. And um, count on me for maybe one or two strokes. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> best ball, best ball golf. I'm all in. If I, if I'm, if I'm like after three holes, if we were actually taking like scores, I lose that. I lose that scorecard easily. <laughs> well, you can lose mine right along with it. Uh, that is, in fact, Casey Robach, uh, former Badgers All-American center, a uh, longtime NFL player, and now working in the personnel department for the UW Badger football program, which we excited to talk about a lot of stuff here with Casey. Um, before we get into it, I want to remind you guys that we are presented by betonline.ag, where they continue to be your number one source for all of your online sports wager needs. You name it, they've got it over there at Bet Online. Head on over to the website or you Use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V, bet online, where the game starts. Um, so I guess we start in Surgeon Bay here um, yeah. today. I learned something. I've been doing a little, back, uh, been doing a little bit of uh, research. You're Nick Grison's cousin? What's up in the water up there? <laughs> I think it's to the cherries, actually. It's not the water. It's the cherries. Um, but yeah, no, so Nick, um, Nick is my cousin. Um, also his brother, Chris, who had, uh, um, an NFL, uh, career too, also a cousin, um, small family on the, that's on my dad's side, small family, but it was, it was fun. Um, not only in high school playing with both those guys, um, but then also be able to play college career with, with Nick, uh, for, for a short bit. But yeah, we're cousins. It's there's there was like a pipeline of uh, of guys, you know, back then in the late '90s, you know, mid to late '90s, um, of guys coming out of not only Sturgeon Bay but Door County as a whole, the whole county. Um, you know, you talk about the Flanagan brothers. You know, Jim, who went to Notre Dame, uh, played 10, 11, 12 years in the, in the league. His his brother Brian, who was a linebacker here at Wisconsin, uh, Bobby Adamoff. Uh, who had a really successful career here at Wisconsin, started as a walk-on, earned his, earned his right for a scholarship and played huge dividends in those, uh, um, those, 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 those great years that we had down here in Madison. So Casey, tell us, first of all, I love Nick because I asked him for that number. That's how I got 45. So I got to nice. also, nice. also he abused me as a young fullback when he was a senior uh, linebacker, but, but, Always was super kind to me, even at, you know after the abuse on the field, which is completely normal. Um, 
But can you take, take us back to like, when do you start football? What's that look like? Were you always a lineman? Like, how, how did you just start up playing football? I know it's important in Wisconsin, but. Yeah. Um, so, so my dad was a high school football coach. So my, my dad, um, you know, I was the water boy, um, you know, always hanging out in the weight room during the off season um, at every practice. Um, and then I wanted to play football. You know, I was a big, I was always a big kid growing up and stuff like that. And um, we didn't have a Pop Warner team. We had uh, something similar to that that the the parochial schools ran. And my dad's like, "Yeah, let's let's sign you up." Well, I found out that I was too big to play the parochial league football. You know, this was like fourth, fifth, sixth grade football. So um, I just I just went to practice with dad every day. You know, um, hung on the weight room, started working on the weight room, you know, at an early age and stuff like that. And the first time I stepped on a football field to actually play football was seventh grade. And, um, you know, it was full, you know, normal football, uh, all the rules applied, you know, it was, it was tackled, full full pad. You know, I, you know, I know a lot of schools now are going to, you know, the flag football for those early ages. But, uh, yeah, I didn't start till seventh grade. But I had a, I had a um, I had a a long career of being around football prior to that, just with, with, with my dad being the coach and um, being around those guys. Was Wisconsin always the dream? Like, was it always like, I would love to be a Badger or were you, cause I, I feel like in, you know, in the, in the nineties, like it was, if you're growing up in Wisconsin, like you couldn't, you could barely even think about another place. Whereas now, like we see a lot more kids, going all over the place, which we'll talk about recruiting wise a little bit later. But for yeah. you, what was that mindset in, in once you realized you could be a division one college football player? Um, you know, tell you the truth, up until up until probably my um post junior year, I thought I was going to Iowa. I really did. I had a really good relationship. You know, Coach Fry was the head coach at the time. Um Coach McCartney was the area recruiter down here, D line coach down there. Um, I did, you know, a number of camps, you know, that's the way, that's the way recruiting went back in the day. You know, you did, you did football camps. Um, uh, I honestly thought I was, I was going to be, go to be a Hawkeye, which is crazy to think right now. I like can't believe I actually thought that at some point in my life, but yeah, they, they did a really good job. So, um, I remember, uh, building that relationship with them, it's totally different than what's, what's going on today in, in recruiting. But the, you know, there was a relationship built there. Um, you know, that was, that was the days of uh, you get your name called every day um, at school because there was a letter from a college that showed up. Right. I remember my first recruiting letter was from the university of Hawaii. I was like, come home, dinner, dad, walk in. I'm like, I know I'm going to school. <laughs> slap that, slap that letter on the table. Can we swear? Can we cuss on you yes. or not? We'll, we'll, okay. We'll, so we'll, my dad, my dad, my dad's a high school coach, police officer. He goes, he looks at me and goes, F- you are I'm like, <laughs> okay. Duly noted. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but like, you know, there was, it was, it was totally different. Right. So um, camps, camps drove everything. Um, so, you know, my dad, my mom and dad made a lot of sacrifices for me to, to, to go to a lot of camps and, um, you know, uh, heavily recruited by, um, you know, probably the, the, the schools were, um, Iowa, Nebraska at the time, um, Wisconsin, and then Arkansas. I would not fit Arkansas. I go on. <laughs> so, you know, those are kind of the three, the, the, you know, Nebraska, oh, and Michigan state. Those four were kind of the big ones, right? Um, went to camp uh, post junior year. You know, we there wasn't a lot of guys, you know, committing early on back in the day. Um, after my junior year, really thought uh, this was going to be where I was going to go. I remember uh, um, going in Coach Fry's office, you know, post a, a practice down there, and um, that guy had some swagger. No, that guy was that guy was cool as hell. Uh, <laughs> Texas guy, you know, he's born and raised in Texas. So coming to this office and the, the you know, I grew up small town, you know, ten thousand people. Um, you know, there's mahogany walls and footballs, and I'm like <laughs> blown away, right? He sits down in his chair. I sit across from his desk, puts his cowboy boots up on the desk, and his pants leg his pants leg kind of sneaks up on him a little bit. He's got these black cowboy boots on with little yellow hawkeyes on him, like. 
as opposed to in the world, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we have this conversation. He's like, you know, we, you know, obviously, I forget how it all went, uh, you know, verbatim. But um, you know, it was, you know, you're an out of state, you're an out of state athlete, and we don't offer out of state athletes until whatever the date was. I'm like, coach, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to Wisconsin tomorrow for camp. It's going to be hard to say no to Wisconsin because at that point, uh, John Palermo, uh, the D-line coach at that time, had built a really good relationship with me. He's like, well, we're willing to bet on this, blah, blah, blah. Go to Wisconsin, camp. And now this is like – these are overnight camps, right? So it's like mom, dad drop you off. You're staying in dorms. You know, it's three-a-day practices. You know, they, they, they're beating the hell out of you. <laughs> you know, it's it's full padded. We're, we're, it, it, first flying, it's craziness, right? And um, – uh, walking off the practice field, just walking back to the dorm, which to me felt like a 10 mile hike. Um, in reality, it was a half mile, a quarter mile, maybe. <laughs> but you know how it is, Bernie, after practice, you're like you're just dead tired. You can't right? even walk to get yeah. water. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and Coach Plerbo says, Hey, Robach, come on, I'll give you a ride back. I'm like, you know, yeah. Jump in, his, uh, jump in his car, and he offers me. And I was like blown away. I'm like fired up, you know, my dad, my dad was for some odd reason was, was, was in town and hanging out and stuff like that. And, uh, um, it, it took me five days or so to, to realize after I got home and say, yeah, I'm, this is, this is home for me. And, um, and thank God, you know, hindsight, um, it was the greatest decision I made for sure. That's a cool story. You bring in all these like fun because because I I'm like in between there. I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have social no. media. And you really did have to do these things like coming as a, a New York State player. Casey, you could probably talk more about this now. Camps were super important because nobody knew who you were outside of like, you know, Westchester County. Like how did Wisconsin pick it up? Yeah. Um. There's a couple fables about how I might have gotten to Wisconsin with people sending film there. But like yeah. those were the days when you sent a VHS. Can you go back for a second and, and share what that looks like? Because I know we're going to get into like what it looks like now, which yeah. I can't even wrap my head around. But go back yeah. to like you had to take camps. You had to take send VHS tapes out. People mm -hmm. called your house. People came to your school. Like it yeah. was really – you really built a relationship. And now I don't know if that's – the same type of thing. I, I just let's talk about the past first. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, one hundred percent. So, like post, like you know, you play you play football Friday night. I remember my dad was innovative. I thought at the time he bought a um, a VHS player that had like two decks in it. I feel like I'm in like not there. Go. I'm not. No, you're perfect. So, <laughs> so he bought a VHS like deck. I mean, the thing was huge. Um, but it had two, it had two, uh, slots for DVD or for VHS tapes. And so, um, it was, you know, cause that's how you filmed them. They filmed the games. It was on VHS. You know, the guy was up in the, in the press box or whatever with a handheld, uh, or whatever, uh, mounted uh, VHS recording machine. And, uh, the next day, like dad and I were sitting, you know, in front of that thing with the TV and we're, you know, there's a good play. There's a good play. We're making these highlight films, so to speak, on VHS tapes. And then you put them in the mail and you send them to colleges. And I don't know, like, it, um, I, I don't like the video storage back then must, for these like recruiting departments or the recruiting guy or whoever it was, must have just been inundated with with VHS, these big bulky VHS tapes. Right. And I can't believe you know, where it is today, because it was so, so different than than it is today. Um, but yeah, that's how you got recruited was camps, now camps and uh, sending out your film to to prospective colleges that you thought you fit or you wanted to go to. That's that's how it worked. But you, you were sifting like the like the, the kid or the athlete was sifting through colleges they wanted. Is it is it completely different now? It's I mean, do you still get like film from kids emailing you or oh yeah sure it, yeah definitely yeah. i mean there's there's i mean i get emails every day of you know countless emails of kids you know sending you know hey coach robach uh i'm so and so from so you know whatever heights measurements all this stuff but they send you a video link now obviously uh of their huddle film but yeah it's uh 
I think the biggest difference is, you know, we find them now instead of, I think there's more, the more on the student athlete side of letting co- colleges know about them than uh, the college side knowing about, about the student athlete nowadays. All right. So let's go back. Cause I, I have a million questions about um, recruiting and how bananas it is, but I want to go back to you cause I love your story and I love you. So yeah. uh, I want everyone to know, but, but so, you so after five days, you were sitting in Coach Palermo's probably Cadillac at the time. And it was a Lincoln Town car, black Ooh, Lincoln Town car. I wow. still remember it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I because they had switched <laughs> to Cadillacs uh, shortly thereafter after you graduated, yeah. or maybe yeah. Derek. So what what's it like when so you so you say yes? I mean, I remember doing this. You had to call Coach up and say, mm-hmm. "I'm coming." What what was that conversation like with with Coach Palermo? And were you going to play center or you going as a D lineman? No, I was going as a guard. You know, I was going as a guard. That's you know, interior lineman, guard, whatever. You know, I never I never played center until um, uh, my second year uh, during spring ball, my first spring ball here at Wisconsin. But um, I remember the phone call. Like, obviously, I'm a 17 year old kid. You know, at the time, nervous. Uh, excited you know all the emotions are running through through that body right um call him up and you know uh, you know Palermo he's not uh um hey how are you kind of guy uh you know tell me about this or that you know he's very cut and dry um so I call him up and I'm like coach uh there's no other place I don't even remember what I said but you know something along the lines like no other place I'd rather play you know, then for my home state Badgers, you know, uh, count me in, all this stuff. And, um, uh, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then it was, uh, uh, it was, you know, it was weird because now we have so much communication with the, with, his, with, with, um, I don't think I heard from him again for, I, I have no idea, you know, <laughs> like signing day. So I, so I committed, I committed before my senior year. Right. And uh, signing day was way late. It was way late. I think it was was it's like February, it was February, like senior year. Of yeah, yeah. Our, I think it was of our senior year. You know, yep. it was it was way late. So um, obviously came down for anything and everything that I could come down here for, especially like home games and whatnot. But yeah, it was. Uh, I, I was all in, and and obviously they were too. And I always say like, you know, I'm I'm from I'm from a small town. You know, I grew up. I think Sturgeon Bay right now maybe has a population of like 10,000 people. I think it was like 7,000 back then, you know, so small, small town. Um, and I, I felt like, you know, um, you know, the Badgers took a chance on a, a small town guy. You know, that was, that was kind of like my driving point, the whole, my, what, what, what fueled me, you know, they're, they're, they're taking a, a, a risk on a small town, small town guy. And it fueled me to not let them down, you know, up until the point, of getting to school here and then then that driving force all the way through school here. Listen, I, I completely understand that. Uh, <laughs> that <laughs> Who comes to Edgemont High School? First off, you know one comes to Edgemont High School. It's a, you know, I don't even know, probably like 500 people in that high school. But we, mm-hmm. we were good at football, but we played in the smallest – we played in C out of – D was the smallest. Neither here nor there, but I, 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 I understand what you're saying because it's exactly my story. Um, yeah. So, so wait, so we always, this is my favorite question and Matt Perkins' favorite question. This is also pre-everything. So you can give what you want to or don't. What was your official visit like? And who was your host? Um, well, first of all, host was uh, Chris McIntosh. Oh, Mac was my way. host. That's Ooh. awesome. Yeah, yeah that is that is crazy? Awesome. Yeah. So Mac was my host. Um, we stayed at the... Uh, um, Golly, which one would we stay at? Oh, at the Concourse. Concourse Hotel we stayed at. Um, I remember walking into my room. Um, obviously, uh, my dad only was the only one that came down with me for the official visit. Mom had to work or something like that. Couldn't get away. Um, Concourse Hotel, you walk in. I remember like a pizza box sitting on um, on my uh, bed or, con- or somewhere in the room. And I'm like, pizza. Yeah, cool. Open it up. It's this giant, I mean, uh, 12-inch cookie, whatever, you know, chocolate chip cookie, you know, with um, uh, probably the, the, the W on it, the Bucky, uh, my name on it, 
I mean, I thought I was the coolest guy in the world. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then there was, I think there was some letters, some cards in there from the coaching staff, you know, like, um, you know, excited to see, excited you're here. Um, you know, the rhetoric that, that the, the coach speak and all that stuff. And um, I, I was blown away. Uh, absolutely blown away that they had a 12 inch cookie in a pizza box. You know, I don't know how much a 12 right. inch cookie in a pizza box these days is going to sway someone, though. I'm, I'm <laughs> it was, that that it was like the best thing in the world. It really was awesome to walk into that. Yeah, it really was because you're blown away because you don't know. You have no idea what to expect, right? No idea. So um, during that during that visit, I remember. Um, uh, so Chris was so Mac was my my host. Um, I remember having like a a, a player a player panel that we went and talked, talked about now, now remember now the facility wise here was um, not what it was, what it is, you know, when we played, uh, when I played, when Bernie played um, or what it is today. So a lot of the um, meetings and uh, things you did during the day were around campus. Like I remember we're sitting in the first time, like the whole coaching staff, the first meeting that we had like big meeting or whatever it was, was at some auditorium, on campus. It was just a classroom. And um, they had some players in there and, you know, all the coaches introduced themselves, introduced us to our, our hosts, um, did uh, uh, a player panel, which was, I thought was one of the best parts about it. You know, guys just letting, letting you know what a day in the life of and what to expect when coming to University of Wisconsin. I remember uh, we did a, a dinner at the, uh, a steak dinner at the Avenue Bar, which is you know, RIP. I mean, that place was phenomenal. It was one of the best steaks I've ever eaten on my official <laughs> visit. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So we went to the Avenue. I remember one night for dinner. Um, oh golly, what else did we do? I know. I remember uh, breakfast at Coach Alvarez's house. Um, and kind of one on ones in his office. Uh, you know, that was kind of to wrap up the whole thing. Um, we had an academic meeting uh, where they kind of split us up. Um, we didn't have the whole group. I, I, don't even, I can't remember how many guys were on. I'm guessing there was probably 10 to 15 guys on the, on the entire trip at the time. I think like five of us went, went to like a classroom, just this random classroom on campus for an academic meeting and met with a, um, uh, uh, a professor of some sort. Um, and remember now, this is in the middle of February or whatever. It's, it was late. Um, they used to do all the official visits in winter time, which isn't the best time to bring <laughs> prospects onto campus here. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I was I was all in, so it didn't matter, right? Um, but looking back on you know what we do today for official visits and 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 recruiting wise. It was nothing. You got a cookie, dude. Nothing. You got a 12-inch cookie. I got a 12-inch cookie now. Oh. And probably maybe the best steak you've ever eaten. Uh, 100%. 100%. And, and I'm not going to lie, the breakfast at uh, Coach Alvarez's house was phenomenal, yeah. of course. Um, and you yeah, do was... any – I mean, maybe, Casey, your – I think yours was similar to mine. But, like, I walked in with my mom's blockbuster card to the college club. And like they just let yeah. you in. Now things yeah. have changed dramatically at all the bars. Yes. 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 So, but this is you're talking about. Oh, one. When I first showed up, they wanted you there. They didn't really care, and we did all these crazy things. It's funny that you said by accident, but I'm. I don't think you you didn't mean it literally. You're like, oh, I only really remember the avenue and Coach Alvarez's house, and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I remember yeah. the Avenue Coach Alvarez's house in the cookie because that's what I drunk ate at the end of the <laughs> Yeah. Well, believe me, like we went out, we went out with hosts post um whatever at night dinner and stuff like that. And Mac was a phenomenal host. Mm-hmm. I remember the first night we went, um the the offensive line who was like Jerry Wunch, um golly, who was all that in that era? Um Manny uh golly, I can't think of their names right off the top of my head. But they had a they had a house right here on the corner of um, Regent Street and Breeze. And um, it was just a beer pong and yep. basement and, you know, whatever, you know. So it was just a hangout time, which was cool because you're just hanging out with guys. It was, it was really normal to – it was a very si- similar to what I knew as, you know, what you do on a, a, 
a night out. You know, you just hang at somebody's house and have a good time. Um, yep. Obviously, we 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 experienced State Street and all that has to do, and you know, the found out what the KK was and all that great stuff. Um, but yeah, it was um, looking back, comparison wise, <laughs> it's kind of it, you kind of giggle at you know, wow, I, that worked, you know, but it did. It it, and, and now you're driving around in a beautifully decked out golf cart, you know, with these kids on the back. <laughs> I, I see you. Yeah. Listen, I, yeah. I'm always in the uh, – I'm at uh, State Street Brats just watching you go back and forth <laughs> as, yeah, as I appreciate sure. um, Wait, so, sure. But Casey, you – I mean, let's get into your career because you, you played with some of the best linemen. You played with some of the best running backs. You played with some of the best players, maybe on some of the best teams – to, to be part of, of, of the Badger um, history. Yeah. I want to ask about a young um, Macintosh, but we can get back to that. Uh, yeah. But, but what, what were those years like? Like how, how exciting was it? Like what, I mean, you played with, you overlapped with a bunch of guys that I played with like Grison, right. Mark and yeah. even more guys, but yeah. the Ben Johnson, Al Johnson, what what go, walk through your career a little bit and like how you got to where you were you started at guard then you got moved to center yeah. and then you guys started having this absurd success and then I mean, you played 10 years in the league so it couldn't have been bad there <laughs> no no not at all so like when i when i came on campus like nowadays everybody knows who their recruiting class is right so mm-hmm. you know like you know jimmy from so and so and Bill from whatever, you know? So like I showed up on campus or, you know, the first time I kind of realized, you know, who was all in my recruiting class was not only like um, uh, home football games and stuff like that. Cause I'm meeting guys like Mike Solwald and um, who else was kind of in-state guys, golly, uh, Ross Kalaji, um, guys like that, you know, those are all in my class, you know? So I knew the in-state guys cause those are the guys that would sure. frequent these, these games. But I remember in high school, they used to come out with, I don't know if they still do it, but um, USA used to come out with a high school All-American team. And uh, um, my football coach, who was the English teacher, the head football coach at the time, had it in his classroom. He goes, he goes, hey, did you see the high school All- All-American team? I'm like, no. He goes, so he sends it to me. He gives it to me or whatever. You know, I'm like paging through, you know, and, and I see Ron Dane on there. I'm like, he's coming to Wisconsin. That's going to be a teammate. I didn't even know who Ron Dane was. <laughs> Until that point, you know, so it was, it was crazy. So fast forward. So you, you get on campus um, and there was there was no like early enrolling back then. You know, now we had I think we had 11 guys this this semester early enroll that graduated a semester early from from high school and are um, now on, on the roster. So they're doing spring ball. They've they showed up here in January, wherever it is. And um, so there was not So I graduated high school. And, uh, like six days later, I move into the Regent, uh, the Regent apartments right across, right across the road here. And I go through the whole summer, um, strength and conditioning program. And it's, uh, you know, fast and furious and it's totally different than anything you, you, you realized before or done before. And then, um, right. Then you get a small break and you're into camp. And uh, not everybody, not everybody from my recruiting class even came down for that. So, um, uh, wait, guys, I remember showing up the seminary. No, no, I'm about to get. That's the good part. <laughs> so, so we go to fall camp after that little break in the summer, and uh, you go to the seminary, which was where we held our fall camps from, which is out in Verona. I think it's Verona, um, which is a three week camp of two days. And uh, I remember looking across the hallway and Bill Ferraro was there. I'm like, you, Bill? No, I'm Casey. Hey, we're roommates. You know, and that, that's the first time I met Bill was at, at camp. You know, you so see you walk in, you check in, you hand your, your keys, and you're locked in there for three weeks. You know, they'll give you a night off here or there and give you your keys back and stuff like that. But that's the way it was. Um, you know, that first year, it was, like, it was like drinking from a fire hose. It really was. Because you know, it's all so new. It's all so much faster. It's... Um, everybody's bigger, faster, stronger, and all, whatnot. You know, so I, I'm playing left guard, um, a scout team. You know, that whole season it really was. It was about developmental. You know, I came in here, at, you know, six five, six five, um, two two seventy five, whatever, right? Um, 
and I go through that whole year and it's just about getting bigger and stronger and understanding what college football is all about. Red shirt that year. And we're going to spring ball and uh, now I'm 6'5", 310. And like, that's how fast, like they put weight on you. You know, it's, it, it was insane back then to think about that now as I'm trying to lose, lose all that. Um, going to spring ball and we graduated five, five offense linemen that year. You know, there's, there's, uh, Three of them, oh, all, all four of them went, had gotten to a camp at least, right? So they bring in, um, they bring in a transfer from a JUCO, I think, or something like that. And um, Jim Huber, Coach Huber, was my O line coach. You know, right before spring ball, goes, "We're moving to center." I'm like, oh, "I don't know. I've never done that before, but let's go." You know, whatever. So it was me and him battling um, this this transfer that he brought in, you know, through spring ball. You know, he uh, he unfortunately tears up his knee, and I kind of get all the, all the reps. So it's McIntosh was the only returning starter that year. Aaron Gibson had some playing time, you know, as an extra tight end and you know some tackles tackle work and stuff like that. Otherwise, the three the three interior guys are you know Billy Frio at left, me, and then Dave Costa, who are all redshirt freshmen. And, you know, I thought we were going to kill Huber that first year because he went from a massive uh, veteran line to, you know, sometimes we didn't know where the four hole was. We thought it was, it was left, but it was really right. You know, so, I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy stuff like that. Um, so, obviously, not, not only, like, getting thrusted into that starting role, but, you know, playing a position that I've never played in my life, you know, was, 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 was taxi and whatever, but I look, look, like I said before, they took a chance on a small kid from, from, from Wisconsin. I wasn't going to let him down. Um, that year had some, some ups and downs tremendously. Right. Um, and the thing is the expectations that season was, was there wasn't going to be a letdown from the year before, you know, Ron had just cranked off like 2000 yards as a true freshman. You know, we got one of the premier backs, you know, behind us, you know, we can't, we can't fall short as an offensive line. And uh, it was, uh, it was, it was a crazy, it was a crazy year for sure. No doubt. Attention athletes. Do you want a frictionless and tailored financial planning experience to secure your future? Well, look no further. Introducing Oak Bridge Wealth Management, the premier financial planning firm for professional athletes led by wealth manager, Chris Anasetti. Our team provides a unique and comprehensive approach, ensuring your financial success both on and off the field. We understand the unique challenges you face as a professional athlete, from managing cash flow habits to planning major business purchases and navigating complex contracts. That's why we've developed a proven process, working closely with our strategic partners to provide seamless solutions for your unique financial journey. Our services evolve with your career, offering short, mid, and long-term goal setting, portfolio optimization, real estate investments, and more. As you transition to life beyond the field, we support you with career development and philanthropic ventures. But don't just take our word for it. Top NFL players like Chase Boulier, Tyler Biotish, Alec Ingold, and more trust Oak Bridge Wealth Management to guide them towards financial success. Troy Dye of the Minnesota Vikings says, I really love the work that Chris and the rest of the Oak Bridge group do. I especially like the honesty and transparency when it comes to setting up financial goals and plans that best fit my needs and situation. It's time to elevate your financial game plan. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anacete. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And join the winning team. So you get you get through your first year, and then um, you know y- you head to two consecutive Rose Bowls, you know, and, and win two Rose Bowls, and you're starting in these games. Yeah. And you know you talked about that line with you and Mac and Gibson and all these guys, mm-hmm. Ferrario, and obviously like that sort of era, I think in a lot of ways defined Wisconsin football for the last three decades, right? Like that, yeah. that, that run and that sort of style of football is 
was synonymous with not just the Badgers, but the entire state of Wisconsin for a while. Could you feel that, like, what was the, I guess, the culture of the team at the time that you think sort of led to, led to that? You know, I think we, I don't know if I ever played a game, there may have been a few here or there and stuff like that, but I don't know if I ever played a game that we weren't the underdog, you know, nationally. I don't think we were recognized very often as, you know, the capabilities that we were able to do. And I think as a team, we embraced that. You know, we really did. We loved being the underdog. I remember watching like college, you know, college football, you know, prior to games in the hotel room and stuff like that. And Lee Corso, you know, always picking somebody else and all this stuff. And that, that just fueled us, you know, you know, not only not in game day, but in off season, in, you know, the game week preparation, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, the 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 fact that I played with some like really truly amazing Badgers um, is I never wanted to let them down too either. You know I think Chris McIntosh, you know Chris was a captain I think for two years down here. Chris could have been a, a four year captain down here because he played at a high level. He demanded um, perfection you know each and every day from everybody on the line, and uh, that's that's contagious. It really is. Um, you know we. We as an offensive line as a whole, um, like demanded perfection each and every day we went out there. And, um, you know, it was grueling. I ain't going to lie. It was grueling as hell. Uh, but we, you know, nothing comes easy whatsoever in life. And that was something that we, we, we definitely embraced and, wanted to put Wisconsin on the map nationally of, you know, you know, this is really good football and we'll, we'll play with anybody anywhere. Just make sure there's a hundred, hundred yard grass field and football and we're ready to go. <laughs> Nothing comes easy when you run ISO zone and power all game yeah. long. <laughs> I wouldn't want any other way. And the other team knows you're giving it to Dane and like, yeah. you got to stop him. What was it like playing with Ron Dane? It was phenomenal. I mean, Ron is, is a very quiet, humble individual. He really is. I mean, if you ask Ron a question, don't expect more than five five words coming back for an answer. You know what I mean? And that's the way he's always been. Um, you know, he uh, you know, I, he worked extremely hard. You know, he, he had high expectations for himself as the team did, you know, but they um, – it was fun because we, we knew if uh, as an offensive line, you know, if we get into the safeties, it might go the distance. You know what I mean? Because there's no there's nobody that wanted to tackle, you know, 246, 250, 260 pound Ron Dane um, with the speed that he had. You know, it, it was um, it was fun because, uh, you know, the offensive staff at that time, you know, put it on uh, on on us and Ron to uh, to take over games. And that's that was phenomenal. It, it, it it's phenomenal. I mean, you you literally had the best line blocking for one of the best players to ever play at the university. Do you think Ron Dean's a a generational player, or is he just someone we'll never see again because the game has kind of changed? Yeah, the game is so different nowadays, right? Um, uh, you know, I think he was for the era. He was phenomenal. He really was. Um, but I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again because the game has changed so much. Um, you know, I, other than Iowa, who, who who lines up in 22 personnel anymore? You know what I mean? That's it's just not there anymore. Um, so, you know, his 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 records and his uh, what he did on the football field as a college athlete, I, it'd be hard to find again. Really Wait, I have to ask, how cool is that game against? Was it Iowa where you guys everyone's waving the towels to break the rushing <laughs> record? Dude, that must have been uh, the it coolest was thing. It was, it was so much. I mean, game day environment at that time was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, fans were – and it was not just the city of Madison. It wasn't just game day. Like, the whole state of Wisconsin was was Badger crazy, and especially Badger football crazy. It really was. It, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, that Iowa game, you know, we, we went into that season, you know um, – you know, we never talked about, you know, Ron breaking the record or, you know, Ron winning the Heisman or anything like that. But, you know, as a per as as a as a personnel group, offensive line, like that was our goal. And we knew 
and as, kind of as a team, it was our goal for sure. But we knew it wasn't just going to be Ron. It was, just wasn't going to be the offense. You know, we needed a stout defense to get the ball back for us. We needed a, a phenomenal punt team, a punt return team. It, the whole team, you know, that, you know, Ron obviously won the Heisman and got all the accolades and stuff like that. But that team is what won all that stuff for him. Now, going to the Iowa game, you know, we uh, – <laughs> We were confident. We knew we were going to break the record. We knew we knew Ron was going to break the record that game. You know, it just didn't. You know, when and when and how was the question, right? I'm so happy that it wasn't like, you know, you know, a one yard run and he fell on his face and you know we kind of <laughs> you know, whatever it was, you know, he ripped off a good run. He really did, and um, you know the place was electric. It exploded. You know, and um, you know to see uh, the, the towels and the craziness and stuff like that. Um, you know, as I reminisce and think back to it and see the, the video clips of it was, it, it was really spectacular. The crazy thing is, you know, other than the guy that got naked and ran across the field, <laughs> I don't even know if we as an offensive line, like really realized the record just got broken there. Cause if you look at the photos, you know, we, we went back and huddled up <laughs> and until, the, until the streaker guy ran through the huddle, he were like, <laughs> We must have broke the record, <laughs> you know, type deal. But it was, it was, it was, it was electric. It was, it was fun. It was, it was craziness. It really was. Casey, wait, I have to jump on Matt Perkins. You really did make a, a great comment when you said, like, you guys set the culture for the next up until still twenty four years, twenty three years later. Like, we would be there in the in the locker room or with Coach White, say, "Hey, throw on some Ron Dane clips," and we'd watch you guys. Like, that's how I know of all you guys because. We watched so many Ron Dane clips, not saying we shouldn't have been watching the old line clips, but mm-hmm. I really think that's, that's, I mean, Casey, you'll never admit it, but you set a 25, 24 year culture set in that, in those rooms you're sitting in right now. And I think that's really um, amazing, especially for people who don't come from Wisconsin, who don't get the culture right away. You know, when I showed up, I was like, man, it's big 10, Nick Grison's chewing my face off. Because I'm not good enough yet. And, you know, like you had these dudes from Wisconsin who were like taking it personal to not to not to play at a high level. I just think it's so cool. Matt Perkins, you said it. You know, you guys really did set the culture for like the last 30 years. It's, it's pretty yeah, outrageous. And I, I, and I love to piggyback that. Like I think the one cool thing, like, I, you know, I had a ton of success here, you know. The, the awards and all Americans and all that stuff. And I think one of the biggest rewards I got one day was um, I was back on campus for something and um, Rayola, um, Dom, no, Donovan, Donovan, Donovan. Yeah. Donovan was, was, was here and stuff like that. And um, he, I was just talking with him post-practice or something like that, or post game or so. I don't even remember what it was. And he said, you know, we're just trying to follow in the legacy you guys blaze for us. Mm-hmm. I was like, that, that's pretty awesome. It really is. And, you know, I think it took me a while to hit, uh, you know, what that really meant. And um, I think that was a standard that, you know, not only um, th- that we set here, but it was a standard that Coach Alvarez, mm-hmm. you know, lived by. You know, it was, it was we're going to be the most physical team. You know, nobody's going to out-physical us. Um, yeah, we may come up short athletically once in a while, but we'll make it up in, in physicality. And, um and that's what we thrived on. And that's what we tried to impose each and every Saturday for sure. So we didn't even mention Coach Alvarez, who literally was the lunchbox guy, like go to work, oh, grind. Time. Yeah. This sucks. It's going to suck. Yeah. Um, you're going to scrimmage all the time. Like it was never, yeah. there was nothing easy. Uh, no. But I think that's what the, that sets a culture, right? Like it's a place you want to be. It's a place you know you're going to work your butt off. And if yeah. you do what you're supposed to do, you'll, you'll, you'll be good at football. No matter what, hundred percent. It, it, it's 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 about Coach Alvarez and the the coaching staff of finding guys um, that buy into that culture, that want to be there because of the culture that's there, and that's what it was. It was it was us buying into you know what Coach Alvarez was preaching, you know, each and every week, and um, taking it to the next level. So wait, so Matt Perkins, let's. I know we got to jump into recruiting because I have a trillion questions, and Casey, you're the expert. But Casey, we have to give you some accolades. What do you play? Ten years in the pros. Yeah. You were a uh, third round selection. Yes. Two Rose Bowls, which yep. I mean, that those are the last Rose Bowls we've won. Sadly, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean like that's just how how impressive it is. 
back to back. Yeah. I'm missing more. What am I? Two, three, uh, four year All American, seven year All American, uh, three year only. Yeah, not four. Three year <laughs> only. <laughs> Only. <laughs> okay, so really two-year All-American. The crazy thing is they used to have this freshman All-American team yeah. that people mm-hmm. count for some odd reason. So I was a freshman All-American and, like, coach uh, – and it was weird because, again, there's no internet. There's not crazy internet. There's not phone access and stuff like that. And you know, after my freshman year, I have to get my head beat in and, like, tormented. Um, you know, Coach Heber comes up and goes, congratulations, you're on the uh, – <laughs> he goes, congratulations, you're on the freshman All-American team. I'm like – Oh, cool. He goes, don't get a big head. Go to work. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah. Sounds yeah, about exactly. right. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could ever be all American because they did only running backs, which, yeah, yeah. which wasn't very fair. But you know what? At the same time, I'm like, I don't need this to to know that mm-hmm. I am trying to produce at Wisconsin. And if, yeah. if Anthony Davis is on there, then I'm on there too. Exactly. Like, I don't right. care what anyone says. And I think those accolades, I think we get caught up in a lot of like – accolades nowadays and uh what have you um the, the the cool thing about back then was you know we had a number of all americans each and every year right it it didn't change anybody it was just all right i guess, I guess all right who what we got what times to lift tomorrow or you know whatever it was you know it's, and that was the mentality and the, and the culture that coach Albert, like we keep on going back to this culture thing like it don't mean to beat in the ground but that was the way it was it wasn't about like personal goals or, um, you know, you know, individualists that, um, you know, sometimes creeps into teams today, you know, it was, it was really about the team. It really Mm -hmm. was. Well, I think that's a good jumping off point then, because I wanted to ask you about what do you think the biggest similarity between that culture that coach Alvarez fostered was and the one that coach Fickle is, you know, currently trying to create at UW. It, very similar. It really is. I think, you know, Coach Al, or Coach Fick obviously played, you know, just prior to when I did, you know, so he kind of came up through that that era for sure. Um, but that's, you know, he's all about, you know, the, the physicality and the team first and, you know, establishing your will upon the other team. So he wanted, you know, even though we we run an air raid offense, you know, so to speak, with Coach Longo on offense, it's still that's all it matters to him is the physicality and playing fast and being physical each and every day. So, so it's it's very similar to the, how Coach Alvarez um, approached his teams for sure. Um, so we we gotta jump into this wild bananas world of recruiting. Uh, it's crazy. It really is. Everything I see, read. Matt Perkins is an expert here, but but we talked about what it looked like. 30 years ago, 20, yeah. 30 years ago, you know, sending VHS tapes out, going to camps, um, calling, you know, people were doing a lot of things. Coaches were calling you. They're coming to your high school. You were getting called yeah. out of class. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. You're doing official visits. Yeah. yeah. Not even considering NIL right now and transfer portal. It's a different conversation. Has any mm-hmm. of that transferred into this new generation? Is it, I understand you're sending huddle film but, mm-hmm. you know, we have Clint Cosgrove on. He does uh, – he's been part of a bunch of different recruiting websites. Yeah. And is that how you find people now? Like it's so easy. Like it seems to me like it's, it might be easy to find guys. But then you have to sift through other guys. Like, okay, I, I'm all over the place. But yeah. has anything transferred that was like the norm 30 years ago to now? Well, I think back back when I was recruited, so you know, so the 30 years ago, wherever it was, um, you know, the, the pot was a lot smaller. You know, I mean, the, the 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 VHS tapes you're getting or, you know, your, your recruiting radius, so to speak, was a lot smaller than what it is today. Um, you know, you mentioned huddle. You know, huddle is, you know, the way we've the way all student athletes get their film in front of, you know, personnel departments and colleges and stuff nowadays. Um, that has changed. That has changed everything because it's so easy now to to watch a kid from. Name a state. Alaska. You know, it really is. Alaska. Hawaii. 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 It's, it's everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's, 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 everything's so much more accessible. Everyone is so much more accessible, you know, just, just in, in life in general, right? Um, so you're seeing, um, uh, you know, the, the radius of schools, you know, where they recruit growing and growing every year. 
um, you get inundated daily with, you know, kids that are reaching out to you um, through emails or, you know, DMs, text messages, whatever it is. Um, so it, it's, it, it's, 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 own little, it's, own, it's own monster for real. It really is. Um, but, you know, traditionally wise, you know, 30 years ago, we still send coaches on the road, you know, to, to, to high schools. You know, we have guys who have, you know, pre-planned um, areas to, to scout in and build relationships with the high school coaches. Um, you know, so getting pulled out of school um, is still happening. I just think it's a lot more. You know, I think a lot more schools know about, you know, prospect X, Y, and Z, you know, so it, it's, it's in that way, it's similar, but it, it's, it's ramped up considerably. Um, the ages that we're finding these uh, student athletes are, is getting younger and younger. Um, you know, it's not, you're not just recruiting, you know, seniors and juniors, you know, by the time they're seniors, you, it's pretty much done. You know, you know, and now we're recruiting, you know, freshmen, sophomores, j- juniors for sure. Um, even in like, it depends on the position, like, you know, 28 quarterback right now, which is going to be a freshman next year. We're looking at, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's insane. Try watching uh, uh middle school film on how well, this. Well, that's actually my next question, Casey. Is just how, how do you go from watching, you know, spending 10 years in the league, watching that film? I mean, you don't, people don't get how much time you spend in the film room. So you spend 15 years watching high end football. Yeah. And then, and then you're still watching NFL probably after. How hard is it to go from that to watching tenth grade football, eleventh grade football, eighth grade yeah. football? Like, how do you, how do you personally like do it? Like, how did you learn how to do that? I don't know. I think it's just trial and error. Tell you the truth, um, I think a lot, lot of it is you know, yeah. I post post NFL career, like I want nothing to do with football. I, when I retired in 2012 or whatever it was, like I didn't want anything to do with football. But then I got back into it because my son started playing, right? Mm-hmm. So I was around, you know, high school, junior high kids a lot, you know. And then um, I think I think you pick a few traits um, that are that are like definites that you need to see on film um, of you know the position that you're looking at. And you look for those traits, you know, obviously it's easy to find, you know, size, you know, that's, that's the easy one, you know, it's, but it's, it's, it's projections. It's um, uh, the traits that you see that are really good with, you know, you know, offense linemen, can they bend? It's it's a huge trait. You know, can they bend, you know, how athletic is, is, is what, you know, whatever you're looking at, Um, you know, how they come out of their hips, uh, foot movement, um, strength concerns you know i think there's 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 a a number of uh criteria that you know as you're watching film you kind of check the boxes you know does you know and then obviously those change to change by you know the age of the 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 person you're watching too you know so it's it's a lot of projection to be honest with you is there is there anything that you look for specifically maybe that's different than those things like the the athleticism like an X, are you talking about like a, an X factor burning? Yeah, like is there an X yeah, factor? Like he doesn't take a water break, or I don't know. Like oh yeah, the, no, no, definitely. And I, I think like yeah, you definitely not only like the 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 measurables that you look at, but there's also like you know his effort that he gives. You know, you know, post when the ball when even when the whistle blows, you know, what is he doing? You know, there. I mean, it's everything. I mean, you're 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 looking at everything, and you know these um, everybody makes highlights now, right? And if you're evaluating off just off of ha- highlights, you're going to get burnt sooner or later. So you're watching game film, right? You're watching, you know, uh, their biggest game or the game that they lost by, you know, two, three, you know, a touchdown or, or less, you know. And you watch him through that game and see, you know, what happens when things go bad, you know, his body language. Um, you know, what happens when things are going good, you know, his body language and stuff like that. And it's – um. Yeah, everybody. The measurables are easy to see. It's it's those little nuances and whatnot that you know over time you just kind of realize are really good traits to to also be looking for. Uh, Matt Perkins, I'm going to ask you what yours is, but I'll give you mine. It's helping up 
the running back after they got tackled. I, I don't think I did it enough in college. And now thinking about it, I'm like, I should have done that when any of your guy was down. Like you should have just helped that dude up. I feel like that would be a, a measurable that would stand out for me. Matt Perkins, you're up. Okay, well, I, I I don't know what my uh my my intangible would be, uh, but actually I actually no I do. How well do they communicate their football knowledge, and how well do they uh how well they have to talk about the game and show an understanding for schemes because schemes have gotten more and more complicated. You're not lining up a 22 personnel and running ISO. You're not you know it, especially with Coach Longo on offense. You got to be really smart to understand everything that is going on. The same was with, with Coach Christ when he was there, right? His offenses were a lot of pre-snap movement, a lot of motion, you know, changing formation, stuff like that ahead of the play. Um, but you're also recruiting for culture. Um, I know in, in conversations I've had with, with some guys, like one of the really important things I know you and Coach Fick and Max and Pat is culture. So how would you – what would – you describe a little bit, Coach, of what Coach Fick is trying to do. But how do you establish the relationships and sort of understand how guys will fit into the program at large? Because – you know, especially in 2024, when it's a more transient nature, we've got the we got the transfer portal. You've got more kids coming. You know, early enrolling, right? Like half the freshman class is early enrollees. How do you sustain that culture and find the right guys to fit it? Yeah, I think first and foremost, you find guys that really love football. You know, you know, and there's um, there's guys that like to be a part of football, uh, so to speak, like being part of a team. And there's guys that absolutely live and breathe and love football. You know, those are the guys we're looking for first and foremost. You know, coach's big thing is uh, effort and attitude. You know, he preaches it daily, day in, day out. And um, you get to know, you know, speaking with these kids, visiting with these kids, you know, of their demeanor. Like, are they intense individuals that want to come and be the best at football players? Obviously, they're student athletes understand that 100 you know i'm just talking about the football portion here right you know is football that important to them um and that's who we're looking for no doubt um i think uh you know he, coach you know we talked about the physicality of it you know everybody's being um myself included you know everybody in this building coaches personnel um student athletes are being evaluated every day, everything they do. You know, is it a, as small as, you know, checking in for, for breakfast, you know, uh, classes, um, you know, body language in the weight room, you know, are they are they tearing it up in the weight room? You know, that's, that's the thing that, you know, everything is evaluated on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and you find those guys that really love football, and really love that kind of culture, those are the kind of guys you you plan on sticking around, you know, because with this transfer portal, you know, everybody, you know, I come from an NFL background, obviously, you know, honestly, our team is all, everybody on our team is now on one-year contracts, you know, so to speak, right? So they can, they can leave, unfortunately. So, you know, you got to find those guys that um, really believe in what Coach Fick preaches, and the way that we're going to – what we're going to demand of you every day, and those are the guys that we, we want for sure, 100%. So final recruiting question before we get you out of here. Um, how do you balance uh, – when, when it comes to who you're recruiting, when it comes to who you're looking at as prospects, how much do you weigh what you see and the, um, you know, the player personnel staff sees versus position coaches, right? How, because that is – especially in 2024, it used to be like all position coaches doing recruiting, right? There were no like really right. specialized recruiting departments. We've seen that over the last 10 years, especially starting in the SEC, moving through the Big Ten. And now what you do is player personnel. So how much are you weighing what you see versus what a position coach may want or sees or is caping up for one prospect? Sort of what's that relationship, especially with you? You're working with just the, mostly the offensive line and defensive line, I know. So like what is your relationship like with those guys? And how do you guys, you know, decide on really who you're going to focus on? So, you know, I think uh, – so to kind of pull back the, the curtains from a little bit. So, like, my job is to find – to initially find the guys I, I think fit 
what we're looking for. Um, and you build, uh, you know, just like on a draft day board, you build build a board, right? Um, uh, offensive line, you know, you, you know, kind of what you're taking, you know, the numbers that you're taking for that year. You know, are you taking five five offensive linemen? Are you taking three? Whatever it is, four, whatever whatever it is, and then you start ranking those guys, right? And then you present them to the position coach, um, and there's a relationship built between the between me and uh, uh, coach Blas for sure. Um, because I need to know what he's looking for too. Um, you know, there might be some things that we disagree on, um, as far as what we're looking for, but for the most part, we're pretty in line with what, what a Wisconsin offense lineman should look like and, you know, what we're looking for. Um, but at the end of the day, final, final say comes down to the position coach still. Um, but like it, that, it's fun though because also you can like there's a kid from you know wherever that I really feel strongly about. You know, I'll stand on a table and be like, "This is a guy." If you come with a you come with a a, a a complete argument for it, most of the times he'll see he'll see why, right? Um, and vice versa. Uh, you know, so it's a two way street. So it, it, it's a work, working relationship. Is there some contention sometimes? Hell yeah. yeah. And that, that's business. That's business as a whole. Right. Sure. But um, as you said before, uh, you know, this was all done by position coaches in the past. And in the last few years, you see personnel departments more and more involved in not only finding the kids, but recruiting the kids and, you know, doing it all. Fast forward a couple of years from now. Position coaches may not be a part of it anymore. You know, I think they'll play a small role in it. But, um, you know, the, the model that, that college football is going right now is, you know, I think you see position coaches um, role in it being smaller and smaller. And I don't see that stopping. You really don't. Especially when you look through like the, the, the SEC, Big Ten, you know, stuff like that, where we have the, the, the tools and the manpower to, to, to change that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a delicate balance of, you know, of egos, um, (laughs) (laughs) for sure. Um, but also, you know, um, just aligning, um, what, what, what we, what we truly see as what would work here. I have two more questions. Uh, sorry to keep you a little bit late. Um, uh, I'll owe you, I promise. Um, the, we don't need to dive deep into this because it's, it's its own beast. But you, we're trying to build this culture at Wisconsin, right? I think we're all trying to help. I think every Badger tries to help the program in whatever way they can. Yeah. The NIL is this huge monster, right? How do you compete to build this culture that you want to be, that Fickle wants to make, that mm-hmm. that we're trying to keep You know, your legacy, Donovan's, mine, everyone's? Mm-hmm. And compete in this crazy world with the NIL. You don't have to go deep into it because it's its own mm-hmm. and we could be here for days on it. But but it's got to be such a pain in the butt to say we got this perfect kid and then maybe name image likeness is the reason. Not a coaching fit, not a – like I see myself, not an academic. Does that I – mean, it has to play a part. But like what's that – what's that pain point for you guys? Yeah, I, it, like you said, it's its own animal. It really is. and. Um, uh, I, th- and we have ran into those situations 100% where we think it's the perfect thing and you lose out, you do. Um, you can't, you know, one coach one time said me, you can't, what, what was the saying? Some about the ones you lose is the ones you lose and move on, whatever. But it's hard, right? Because you pour a lot of resources and a lot of time and effort into, into individuals. Um, NIL is not going away, unfortunately. Um, you know, we're kind of, we're, we are blessed here at the university that where we do have a fairly competitive NIL, uh, with a, with the varsity collective and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nowhere near the scale of, you know, some of the, the larger schools that not, not need to be said, but we kind of get the idea. Um, I think not always I a good thing we, though. <laughs> yeah. It's not always a positive to be that. I mean, you can no. see kids are just like. We, we're, let's not dive into it. I have one more question. That's actually. Um, I, I got, let me finish yeah, up. Yeah, this please, 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 please. But like, I think the 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 vetting of student athletes and finding the guys that really care that football really really cares to them 
and guys that really fit the culture, I think kind of trumps all that. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, yeah, we are, the you know, university is competitive in NIL. And we're not going to recruit a kid that, you know, NIL is number one on their box. You know, we're going to recruit the kid that, um, that football is number one in their box. You know, the kid that has, you know, an engineering degree degree from Wisconsin is number two in their box. You know, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's the world we live in now. It's, it's not fun <laughs> to say the least. Um, but it's, you know, the vetting process and the size and the fact that, you know, personal departments are getting bigger and bigger. So you can mm -hmm. do some more investigation and do and find out more about student athletes is definitely helping the process for sure. to say the least. So I got one more question. Mm -hmm. Casey, when you sit on these meetings, you're in a high school, you're, you're with a student with their parents, maybe you're with the coaching staff. How does it feel like, what's it like when you literally offer somebody a scholarship and know yeah. it's going to change yeah. their entire life? And they're like, they, you know that they're going to say yes and it's going to make their – like what is – that must feel so – I just want to hear you from your words like that experience. It's a great experience. No doubt. No, it, it's it's euphoric. It really is. You know, I, I – the cool thing is I, I've been in these kids' shoes, right? And it, not at the not the craziness world that the recruiting is today, but I've been in their shoes. And I remember that feeling of, of getting a, a college scholarship offer. And – um it's fun. I ain't gonna lie. It is fun because you see, you know, the, the jubilation on on mom and dad's face, the kid, the kid's face, whatever it is, and you and you reminisce of what that feeling was like for you back in the day. And you know, I, I um, hate to be an old head and all that stuff, but like, you know, that's that's why I think like there's a lot of schools that offer a lot of kids, no doubt, right? And I, I think that Wisconsin does it the right way still. And you know, we're not we're not going to be the the 400 offer 500 offer school each each rec recruiting cycle because of you know of the the kind of kids we recruit you know we're going to be you know in the middle of the road but you know so th those 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 mean something you know those you know when i when i give an offer to a kid or a coach gives an offer to a kid you know those are committable offers like he can turn around and say that 30 seconds after you offer him say i'm coming we got our guy right so it, it's it is life-changing for a lot of kids it really is you know, um, you know, I was a, I'm, I'm the first um, uh, first in my family, I think, to get a college degree. You know, so it's like that opportunity it, it is still out there for a lot of these kids, you know, and it's stuff. It's craziness to think like that, to the, that, um, you know, it can be life changing, um, not only like the degree portion of it, but, you know, the development into being an NFL player and like playing 10 years in the NFL. It's, it's the first step of many, but it's, it, it is huge. It is fun and it's, it's exciting and everything else. And then seeing them develop is, is, is the greatest part. Yeah. Oh, I just asked that. Um, let us, Matt Perkins and I do it one time. Just go. <laughs> oh my God. Be crazy. Let me find some, let's just find some kid that you guys want to offer and then let us just go do it. I, I we do it on the podcast. It'd be perfect. Yeah. Would that, what did that be for? That, that would be would amazing. Be that would yeah, be right? amazing. Uh, yeah. I just think it would be so amazing to see like their face light up and, yeah. you know, at, right. As we had that experience, know like your life is never going to be the same because you're going to play, you're going to go to Wisconsin, you're going to live in the Midwest, you're going to be in Madison and your whole life is going to, has is now down this new amazing path that, right could get you where like, listen, you're sitting in the Wisconsin office working for the football team. You know, right. like my wife's from Wisconsin. We have a kid now. Like I, I, I generate all like my positives to coach Alvarez saying, let's take a chance on this kid. Yes, yeah, it's, it's true. It's what I percent true. And the cool thing is like, um, you know, I'm sitting, I never thought I'd be sitting here working for uh university of Wisconsin in the personal department. No doubt. You know, I remember, um, it, it's crazy. The cool thing is, like you, you, like your wife is from Wisconsin. You know, my wife is my high school sweetheart. She's been through this whole journey with me forever. You know, so she seems she's seen it all. She's seen the the good, the bad, the ugly, no doubt. And it, it's it's amazing to think, like you know, reminisce about you know, whatever it is, thirty years ago, almost thirty years ago now, and to see that that process of how it all came together. Because I could never have planned any of this. No doubt. And it, it, it all, it really did start with that offer from the University of Wisconsin. And 
here I am today. Right, because you could have taken the Iowa path, and who knows? You could still be sitting in Wisconsin. It doesn't mean it wouldn't, but I probably yeah. wouldn't have. Um, I doubt but I would be friends with think you. about that. Like, if I went to Iowa, there's no way my, my high school sweetheart would have followed me to Iowa. And then they, so my three kids – I wouldn't have them. You know, I mean, yeah. it's nuts to think that that blew that just blew my mind, Bernie. Yeah. It's really. Yeah. I mean, I I've thought a lot about this because, really, like when you reflect, like because we've been doing the podcast and asking a lot of people why Wisconsin, but if nobody mm-hmm. ever reflects on, like, holy moly, this gave me every opportunity. I work for the university too. Like, I yeah, would exactly. never had this opportunity to do this <laughs> unless I didn't play for the or I went to Wisconsin. Right, that's number one. Yeah. And then playing yeah. football doesn't hurt; it helps. So it's right. just like. So all these things intertwined that when I boil it down, I'm like, man, if Barry and Coach White didn't say like, yeah, we'll take this random like Jewish kid from Westchester County, New York, like I wouldn't be here. Like, there's exactly. no way. I don't know where well, I'd be. You but I don't want to know. I don't like to yeah, know. I know I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with, with everything, how it turned out. That's for sure. Well, well Casey, we're, we're happy that you are here and in this position um, yeah. I'm just happy that we've, you know, been able to have such a cool friendship over the course of yeah. many years. Um, but dude, literally you guys, it's so cool to think about that. You literally did this culture, like you created this. And now it, what's cool is fickle, even coach Chris, Jimmy, everyone has built on that culture that you guys created. And 100%. I don't know if you were reflecting, I would say that's pretty awesome. It, and you know, and I never take the time to sit back and you know smell the roses or however you want whatever the cliche is of it, but like to think back and stuff like that. But you know that that culture really has carried through to today. It really has. You know, it started in '91 with Coach Alvarez, and like every coach that has been here, every staff that's been here, it really is the dominating force of what Wisconsin football is. It's pretty awesome. awesome. It's so cool. It is really awesome. Yeah. And it's been really awesome to have you here, uh, coach. And we're so excited about everything Wisconsin, obviously, all the time on this podcast. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not here if I didn't go to Wisconsin and watch this guy hurdle over a bunch of guys uh, on wearing yeah. Penn State uniforms. So um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in uh, wherever you are to Believe in Badgers on the Believe Network, presented by betonline.ag and Oak Bridge Wealth Management. Uh Again, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. On Wisconsin.